escape the nine to five and create your path to freedom. Hello, Cubicle Crashers. Welcome to this week's video blog. I am Lydia Lee, the freedom instigator at Screw the Cubicle. And last week, I had the honor of spending seven days with freedom seekers and adventurous souls that came to Bali to incubate with me for seven full days to design their lifestyle and business of their dreams. Now, your next big thing retreat, which is the retreat name that we have in Bali, um, it is absolutely my favorite thing to do every single year because it allows me to roll up my sleeves, dig deep and get my hands really dirty uh, in the purpose that's really behind the work that people are wanting to create. And first of all, I do a lot of my work digitally, so being able to hug and feel people and build that community in real life uh, in seven days in the tropics was uh, just amazingly exciting for me as a coach. You know, everything uh, that I'm, I'm really grateful for when it comes to my own business is very digital and very remote and location independent, but nothing really beats uh, real life interactions with real humans. So I've been so lit up and realigned with my own purpose with my business as I incubate it with these awesome, awesome souls. So in seven days, we spent a lot of time creating big visions for the businesses that people wanted to start. Uh, we designed a way of working that is going to tap into the strengths and expertise uh, and skill sets that everybody comes with. And we also create a plan of how to launch our big ideas into the world. Now, the retreat is so special for me because it is uh, an opportunity really for me to create a safe place for people to get feedback, people to share their ideas. Very likely not, they're not doing it in real life uh, themselves because they're unsure or doubtful about what is their next step. Uh, and also really it is a place to really be getting real with our fears and our self-doubt and be able to discuss what's really necessary for all of us to experience in order to pursue our next big thing. So I have gotten um, a bit of time after the retreat to really reflect upon the experience that we've had and every retreat is always different. So this year's uh, retreat, I've managed to get some great feedback from the students that have left Bali uh, and have gone home and have time to digest some of that experience to also share what was their aha moments and what really made the difference for them in order to be courageous and bravely pursuing these new life goals uh, and business plans that's outside of their nine to five knowledge. So I have combined five powerful lessons that we learned at the retreat as a retreat recap uh, so that it can also help you if you're in the midst of transition, if you're in the midst of um, trying to get brave to start something of your own, I know that this video is really going to help you. So here we go. Learning number one, know the non-negotiables for your best work. Now, this is one of the first inaugural things that we talked about at the retreat that really help people to receive some boundaries around the type of work that they want to produce and also what they're willing to do to have great work in their lives. Now, this is an important question to ask yourself in the beginning of starting a business because it's very tempting uh, to actually really want to be everything to everyone. And that is because in the beginning of time, uh, there's a sense of uh, unconfidence and doubt that happens when you start a business. You're you're guessing around if you're good enough to do what you need to do, so you tend to offer too much. So this was in day one, one of our first discussions on what those boundaries are and what are the fundamental foundations that we want to really lay out for our, our ideal career so that we aren't tempted to uh, look at shiny objects or think that we have to do too much just to receive success. So one of our students said that one of his biggest learnings was that I learned that I should know myself better, understand what I like to do, who I want to work with before starting my next project. So this awareness of your strengths and your skills, as I mentioned, is going to give you a bit of boundaries. You, there is the difference between work that you want to do and work that you think you have to do. We are no longer doing what you used to do in corporate where you had to conform to a job role. Now, as an entrepreneur, you get to decide where are those boundaries for you, what you're willing and not willing to do to make a living. And I think that's very important to get real clear with when you're starting your business. And when you're playing in your zone of genius, when you're saying, I only start here and I end here, 
with what I want to do for my clients, um, you are going to do more. You're going to master that piece uh, that you really want to be an expert in rather than trying to solve all problems for everybody, which by the way, you will never be able to do. So picking your piece in your business idea, where you start and where you end with customers is a really, really great place to have those boundaries that's necessary in your business. What's also really important is to really understand values. What we talked about in the retreat is what are people going to rely on you for? You know, why does your business exist and why should people care? And knowing some of your top values that is non-negotiable for the work that you produce, what people trust you for, what you're credible for, uh, what you're relied upon for, that's super important to act as a bit of a GPS in your business to say a hell yes or a hell no to particular opportunities that you may be creating in your business. Learning number two, imposter syndrome wins when you hide from the work. Now, one of the biggest obstacles that people face when starting a business is that looming monster called the imposter syndrome that keeps them really stuck on starting anything of their own. Now, you know what that feels like, right? Self-doubt creeps in and before long you're thinking, who am I to do this? How can I charge people uh, and not feeling really good enough to charge people to do the work that you want to do? Now, one of our students at the retreat says that the biggest realization from the retreat was that she learned that she was not an imposter. Uh, she said, I realized that my self-doubts were blocking me. I also realized that I have every reason to believe in my vision. I received so much support at the retreat regarding what I believe in, I am, that I'm capable, capable to create in the world. Now, the reason why this particular woman felt that courage after coming in the retreat was not because she heard her vision and beliefs for the first time, but instead she shared that with other humans at the retreat, which helped to validate that the vision for her work, the purpose of her work, how she was articulating that work uh, was important to share. And this is the big learning piece here, is that when we hide from the work, when we don't share what we're passionate about or what we feel called to deliver as a message behind our work to others, even when your business hasn't even started yet or officially launched, we're really holding back from um, feeling that validation that people can give us, that feedback that's necessary for us to continue to persevere towards this business that we want to start. So validating with real humans is such an important part of the step. So what does that mean for you? It's really simple. Start talking about the work that you want to create. Start helping people that are around you in the realm of work that you want to be creating. You don't need a website to do this. You don't need a social media channel to do this. You just have to be able to want to help. And that is really what a business is built to do. Solve problems and help people do the things that they can't do on their own. Provide a desire, provide joy, provide transformation, whatever it is that is really behind your work. But you need to start talking about it. Stop waiting for your brand to look beautiful, for your website to be launched, to really start doing that work. And that's really how you're going to validate and feel um, that you're not an imposter, that your words and your uh, teachings and your message really does help other people. And really also think about your credentials. You know, imposter really comes in, or the imposter syndrome really comes in uh, when you're not able to identify why you are the person that can help people with the thing that you want to do. So don't just rely on your credentials and your resume, your certifications, your degrees as your only label of your identity of credibility. Really look at your life experience, what you've overcome, what you've actually really been able to do as a human to be where you are today as also part of the credentials and that trust that can be built with the audience that you really, really want to serve. Learning number three, let go of your corporate baggage. Now, I know that one of the biggest discussions we had around the retreat uh, were people um, being really caught up in titles and what were their identity pieces that came from corporate in the past. So what I mean by that is uh, people that have been in jobs for 20 plus years, uh, people that have had already their elevator spiel um, really concocted of how they say hello at a cocktail party, you know, all these titles and what was really the thing that you were known for for many, many years becomes your identity as a human. And when you start a new business, a part of that starts to 
unshackle. A part of a new identity emerges, which can be extremely exciting, but also very scary at the same time. And what's really behind that fear sometimes is a bit of shame. Uh, I know I definitely felt that way when I let go of a six-figure job uh, to be able to pursue something different. It was almost like I was disappointing my family, disappointing my immigrant parents that uh, came to Canada to give me an education, uh, and that I had to answer to other people's um, version of what they think my life should be all about. So the work, the inner work of yourself, really understanding your purpose of leaving your nine to five or starting a project or starting a new venture needs to really come from yourself first before you can really uh, be able to handle naysayers or people that might actually question uh, your reason to take your leap. So one of our students said, um, I needed to work on myself first to heal from the past, love who I am and feel energized by what I am about. Uh, and this particular retreater and student uh, at um, this retreat was someone that's been a scientist. You know, they've been uh, known in a particular industry. They've moved up that corporate ladder and in a way respected by their peers for many, many years before making that jump. And there are questions that come from old colleagues and friends and family that can sometimes um, make you feel a bit uneasy about the decision that you've been making. And she definitely felt this way. Um, but here's the thing, whatever that we're experiencing in the discomfort Things that are a bit sticky and uncomfortable for us to deal with, whether it's our identity of breaking apart, you know, letting go of that old corporate baggage, is super necessary to face and not shove under the rug. Because my belief is that anything that you're going through in your business that feels uncomfortable to yourself is a reflection and a mirror of what needs to also be happening in your personal life. Everything is aligned. Business and life doesn't have to be separate. Uh, business, if anything, really extracts out all the things that you're capable to do and also all the fears that you've been hiding behind for many, many years. So first piece of letting go of corporate baggage is knowing your why. I know it sounds super cliche to know your why, but it's actually really important, as I said, to really know first about your real reasons to take your leap, why it matters to you, why it's more important than the fears that you have, and what's that legacy that you're really trying to create with your career and your work. And when you can really define that in um, a holistic level and in a personal level, you can then be able to explain to friends and family why it's important for them to support you on it. And I think that's super important to enroll people that you love into your dreams. Uh, the second thing is to refrain from judging yourself because um, we're going to feel it more coming externally in terms of judgment when we are also 24 seven judging ourselves what it is that we're doing and that we're good enough or not good enough or whether or not we had an identity crisis and that's what we're going through. So um, really knowing your why will help you to be less judgmental about yourself and really know that really your purpose is potentially bigger than yourself and that's why it's so important for you to pursue it. But be kind in the words that you use in your transition. Be kind in uh, giving yourself the patience and time to learn new things rather than judge yourself that you should be there already because you're comparing yourself to other people. That's just a double whammy of pain. And lastly, really look at your obstacle as the way. Now, Ryan Holiday uh, wrote one of my uh, most favorite books called The Obstacle is the Way. Uh, and really, uh, the concept is around that whatever is the most stickiest thing, the most difficult and uncomfortable thing that you are facing is the actual thing that's going to open the next door for you, is the opportunity to grow and do more with your life. And if you didn't go through that obstacle, you will forever um, probably be stuck there or be faced with particular circumstances that keeps coming into your reality until you learn how to face that obstacle. Learning number four, you already have what you need to start your business. Now, one of the biggest discussions also of what we had in the retreat is how much we tend to overcomplicate things. Any high achievers and perfectionists out there? I'm definitely one of them. Um, now, when you start a business, it is so important to start it lean to start it simple and actually to get you going because starting is, to be honest, 90% of the effort. Most people simply don't start. Don't be like those people and actually start with imperfect action. And when you know that it is through imperfect action that 
allows you to get the clarity that you need for your business. Then knowing that every time you make an action, whether or not it feels like a failure, whether or not it wasn't the way that it was supposed to have panned out, you still know something you didn't know yesterday from doing one little piece of action. Now, it is a really, really um, old story that sometimes we can regurgitate in our lives about that, you know, the feeling of success, the feeling of achievement comes with, you know, sweating blood and tears to get there. Uh, I definitely got that lesson taught to me by my parents who did indeed sweat blood and tears to migrate to Canada and build a life for themselves after we came uh, to a Western country. And that that knowledge and that wisdom in a way was embedded into my, my own brain, but it was no longer serving me in the world that I wanted to live in. So being able to let go of that old story that everything needs to feel difficult, that everything needs to feel complicated in order to feel worthy of that work or feel worthy of that success. Um, is no longer the story we need to be telling. So simplifying it can mean um, what it is that you may need to accomplish or reach out to or uh, a person you need to connect with that can actually help you with your business so that you're not doing it alone. Uh, it could be about low hanging fruit opportunities. You know, uh, we talked a lot about uh, in the retreat, you know, the easiest way to start getting clients, the easiest way to start promoting your work. And everyone went into this area of like Facebook ads and, you know, potentially uh, needing funnels or potentially needing a, a huge brand or a website in order to do so. Uh, but actually starting small, starting with the people you know, starting to tell people in your network or your Facebook page that this is the work that you're now open for business for, um, starting real conversations with real people in your life are so much more of an effective strategy and a holistic strategy uh, to really get the word out about your business. It doesn't have to be complicated things. Uh, and there is a magical beauty in real conversations that allow that intimacy and trust to be built, especially in the beginning of time when no one might actually be recognizing yet about what you do. Um, we get stuck a lot in uh, the idea of overlearning, right? When you're starting a business, you take courses, you read books, um, you really um, just immerse in trying to learn. But I believe uh, overlearning is a form of procrastination because it is a nice safety area for you to not do anything just yet. Uh, but you know, we have to actually have some boundaries around that and go, what is enough of learning that gets me enough information of what I really uh, need to know in order to make my first step and do that step. And that's going to give you much more of an educational piece than actually just reading about it and never applying theory to practice. You can leverage low hanging fruit opportunities that are already available in your world. So for example, when you're searching for a new client, could it be the neighbor? Uh, could it be your best friend's uh, friend or cousin? It could be colleagues that actually really need what you have to share in your work. And those are initially the first people you could pitch to. Um, you could be thinking about launching a beta program, you know, a testing little program to test out your offers or uh, feel more confident in your work. Instead of having a huge launch, why can't you do personal invitations of inviting people almost like a barbecue at your house, you know, or a wine and cheese night at, at an event uh, in order to actually start having these conversations with people that may pay for a beta program or enroll into a beta program uh, without making it complicated. Um, so think of simple ways that you already have access to people, uh, communities, uh, organizations, you know, anywhere in your life that you can actually start you know, pitching your work to, uh, or doing free talks to so that you can start building an audience. It doesn't always have to be your email list or strangers halfway across the world that should subscribe on your website to be your first clients. Know that you have built social equity with the people around you already. So leveraging that is a really powerful way uh, for the right people to be connected to your work. And lastly, learning number five, you cannot do this alone and the importance of having community around us when we do big things in our lives. Now, one of the beautiful things about the retreat experience was the um, opportunity to really be around like-minded people, to be around people that don't think you're nuts for pursuing something unconventional, to really believe in the thing that you want to create because they too share the same values of freedom, creativity, self-expression, whatever, whatever it is that bonds you to uh, having a common goal together. As humans, we are tribal creatures. We don't want to be isolated doing these big things because it's scary. We need um, people to pick us up when we're talking ourselves out of things. 
things. Uh, we need validation from other humans that the work that we're producing, the thing that we want to do, the impact that we want to share is important and valuable for us to do so. We rely on other humans to continue to grow and be brave in hot pursuit of our life and business goals. So surrounding ourselves with positive people, people that are able to um, keep us accountable to our dreams is so important for us to keep persevering. And here's the thing, when you belong to a community, when you have a tribe of people uh, that get what you do, care about you, that you also contribute to, you also give yourself an opportunity to help. Now, sometimes when we have to self-diagnose our own situation, that's a lot harder because you're emotionally attached to your own stories. But when you help other people and you're able to see things neutrally uh, from your point of view and you help this other human bypass an obstacle, very likely, most of the time, you start to say, wow, I had to say that that to myself. Uh, and that was a huge piece of what we experienced at the retreat, that when everybody collect, in, as a collective intelligence of people uh, utilized all their skill sets and talents to really help one person out at a time, uh, it really helps that person get to answers faster, but also on a, on a um, uh, sort of win-win basis, the people that are helping other people also really get a learning lesson on their own. So helping others will cause you to also learn something yourself. And ultimately, how much better is it to build a business when you can share skills, share knowledge, share the journey, and feel the camaraderie uh, of people doing it with you? So whether they are virtual communities or physical communities that you can belong to, know that it's so essential for your well-being and your growth as an entrepreneur, and not to actually try to do it and stomach it on your own, and know that the right people that you need to bring together uh, will be the right people uh, that's going to help you uh, pursue some of the biggest things that you're going to be creating in your life uh, without talking yourself out of it. Now I want to hear from you. Which of these five learnings resonated most with you in what you're experiencing today? But most importantly, how has it helped you to think differently or act differently in order to bring your big vision for your business to life? Please share with us in the comments below as I would love to hear what you got out of this video. And if you're interested in joining us for your next big thing retreat and experiencing some of the awesome transformations that you heard in this video uh, with all the feedback from the people that came to the retreat this year, uh, do check out the information page for the retreat in Bali uh, to find out the next date that we are accepting applicants uh, to come to the tropics to incubate with me and also really watch the videos and uh, really learn from what people uh, did uh, uh, get done in, in just a span of seven days. It is an intensive experience, but one that is um, an opportunity to really take a pause in your life to start thinking about you and your plants without the distractions of uh, real world stuff, you know, uh, and other people's agendas and really spend that time in the tropics building your dream life and your business. Thank you so very much for joining me today. Um, as always, um, I'm always so in appreciation and in gratitude for you supporting my channels uh, and really learning from the work that I'm sharing in the world. If there's any topics, any obstacles that you're facing right now, I would love to film our next videos for you. So make sure to comment and let us know what would you like to learn? What would you like me to film for you? And I'll make sure to dedicate that video to you. Thanks very much and have a great day and see you later. Have you been desiring to create a life and career that gives you the freedom that you deserve, but you're not quite sure where to start? Well, let me be the guide to help you quit that job that's crushing your soul, discover your strengths and make money doing something that you love and will care about. Head over to screwthecubicle.com to find tools and resources I've created just for you to help you jumpstart your escape plan from your nine to five and launch a business you can run from anywhere.